Hey guys, Chris here again with Project Nerf, and today we're going to take a look at a commission that we just finished up for Paul, the PDK Films, and since we were working on his blasters anyway, I did you guys a build guide, a complete build guide on an auto strife, just the way we do them for Paul. This is going to be a long one guys, so uh, stick with me and uh, let's get to it. So uh, anyway, here it is. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, yeah. Paul put us to the test once again. Uh, we completed yet another 10 auto stripes for him. And uh, let me grab one off of my little stripe kebab here and I'll show you what we got into. Uh, so as you can see here uh, on my stripe kebab, all of them are elite blues. These are old school. Um, They've all had the front end removed and the worker front uh, put on, so you can do a variety of different kits. Paul always has me delete the access door because he normally runs like a full rail here for the body kit. Uh, worker extended mag lever. Um, we'll get into it more in the build guide video, but it's a worker cage, aluminum, uh, with inferno flywheels, fang revamp motors, rubber isolators, 18 silicone, 18 gauge silicon insulated wire. Omron micro switches, uh, XSW pusher kit with a honey badger pusher, and these things are just sweet. So, yeah, um, beautifully quiet, really smooth, really nice, and they just rip. So, uh, before we jump into the build guide, uh, guys, uh, obviously gonna be a very very long video here so um you know bear with me watch it in sections do what you gotta do stay with it till the end um because i actually show the process of wiring the blaster but i'm gonna go ahead and do a kind of whiteboard explanation of the wiring and how i do it uh on camera for you at the end of the video just to clarify any questions that you might have so uh without further ado let's do this build guide All right, so we're gonna set up this cage. Oh, I've already got it started here. Um, you can see I've got the motor screwed in. Okay, and on the screws we use blue Loctite, not red, that's permanent. And uh, so I already put this uh, flywheel on. These are containment crew infernos. Um, now, I've got the Kelly Industries spanning board here, which is gonna go over the motor tabs, and it actually tells you, okay, so you can see here a white dot on the board and another one here which tells you how to orient the motors so I have that correct so you're just going to slide this on over the motor tabs just like that and then what I like to do is take my uh, screwdriver something like that and just kind of bend the tabs over just a bit kind of hold everything still and then go ahead and solder that up and uh, that makes it really really easy when you go to connect your wires to it you just solder onto these panels right here, negative, clearly marked, positive, clearly marked, and uh, you're good to go. So anyway, I'm going to solder this up, throw the flywheel on it, and uh, we'll get uh, into the build a little farther. Alright guys, uh, I got asked to do a Strife mod guy to get a little more detailed one, so I'm working on one of Paul's here. Uh, this blaster is completely stock, it's an old school Elite Blue, so we're, I'm going to walk you through it here. As I can. So we're, the first thing we're going to do is take our electric screwdriver and open the battery door. This has to be prepped. Okay, the fins on this have to be cut off. So we're going to take and I'm not going to do the whole thing for you on camera here. We're just going to move along. So trim these off. Okay, you can see how I've done that now. That one's cut down flush. Once you cut off all four flush, we're gonna sand that smooth and make it nice. But okay, for right now, that's acceptable. Okay, so we're gonna flip the blaster over. We're gonna take the screws out. So, okay, for for working on these, guys, it's pretty, pretty simple. Got a little cup here to put screws in. There's all of the screws are the same length except these two. This one and this one on the rail. Okay, so. I like to pull them out first and kind of set them at one end of the cup. All the rest are the exact same length.
Okay, so now that we've taken all the screws loose, again, the longer screws, we're going to separate and kind of keep on one side. Okay, we're going to start working the body up here. So some of these old ones can be really, really stiff, guys. Um, so we're going to make sure that we've got all the screws loose. And I know I do, but that's okay. Um, here we go. Now we're coming. Okay, you just have to work them a little bit. Double check and make sure you've got all the screws loose. And... Okay, so there we go. Now we've separated it. Take this part of the body and set it off to the side for a minute. And we're going to come back to it. This side, very carefully, pull it over and dump all the screws out. Okay? So they're all over my desk here. Pick them all up. Put them in our bucket. Whoops. Dropped one. Okay. So, all the screws are out of this. This is good. Okay. To prep this piece of the shell, we've got to do a few things. Now, a lot of these old Elite Blues have, like, solid material in here, um, which is a pain in the butt. The newer ones do not have it. Okay. So, take your nippers. We're going to take this wall here out, these two pegs, and these four deals right here. So, okay, pretty easy. Get in very close to flush, nip, and lift up. And you see that comes out pretty square. Just like that. That's fine. Okay, cut these down the side, just like this, and then give it a twist. And that comes out of there again i'm not going to mess with this one just this second because it's got solid stuff in it so you see that one came out nice and we're going to trim off any little fine points this one we're probably going to take out with a dremel Okay, so, this little wall right here on the trigger well, here's what you're going to do with it. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera. You're going to take your X-Acto knife and score along the bottom of it. Three or four times. Okay, you're not cutting through it, we're just scoring it. Okay, there we go. Take your nipper, nip it there, nip it on the vertical, and then work it a little bit with your thumb. There you go, look at that, and it breaks out pretty much perfectly flush. See that? So it breaks out great. Again, take your nipper and just go to town on these. None of this has to be terribly pretty because no one's ever going to see it. So all I'm going to do is this last one here. So forgive the sound of my Dremel, but we're going to come in on a bit of an angle. You can see we've and that's just a little slag. Hey, right. and then down here at the very bottom where we couldn't really get to with the Dremel blade, again we'll take the nippers and just clean that up. Um, you can also take a sanding drum and do it, but. And that is plenty sufficient for what we're going to do. And again, all of this can be cleaned up, sanded, and made a little prettier. And there's only one more thing to do with this if you're going to upgrade the cage. So we have to take this post and cut it in on an angle. So let me get my sanding collet. And... Uh, Change that into my Dremel here, if I can find it. Huh. Workshop a mess. Here we go, so I've got my little sanding wheel. I've got that in the Dremel. Okay. 
I'm not going to, I don't know how well I'll be able to actually show you it. I'll show you after we do it, but. Okay, so. You can see, hopefully, what we've done here with that, how we've cut it off pretty straight. And the reason being is the expanded flywheel cage and expanded wheels, this tab will rub on your flywheels and actually bind your motors up. So you have to sand it down. Okay, And that is it for our preparation for this side of the shell. So we're going to set it aside. I'm going to grab the other side and uh, we'll go through the rest of the disassembly and how to, how to do this. Okay, so here's the other side of the body. So certain things we're not going to keep. We're going to get rid of all of the locks and all that BS. So now in this case, the front lanyard mount, we're going to take that out and uh, keep it. The lower lanyard mount, we're going to take it out and throw it in our screw bucket because we will be putting it back in. The front one, we're not because we've got this great worker front end that we're going to be putting in so Paul can put a body kit on. Um, but normally, you would save it to put it back in. Okay, This piece here, again, is only in the Elite Blues. Okay, It's a lock. Just take it out. Throw it away. It's garbage. You don't want it. You don't need it. The spring for the pusher. You're going to take it out, put it in your bucket. You're keeping that. Your in strike tab, you're going to keep that. Okay, we have the worker mag lever for this, so we're going to undo this and go ahead and put that in right this second. So, get my exacto knife here. And open this up. Okay, it comes with the spring, um, which you don't need. Uh, I have never put it in one. I just save them in case I need them later down the line. Put that case away. Get my little screwdriver. Okay, we're going to take the, put a finger on the mag slide right here. I'll take the screw out. Set it right there. We're going to lift off these two parts. Okay, drop the mag lever on over the post. Make sure it goes over the little nub right there and put the screw back in. Very, very easy to install a long arm lever on these. Now, whether you use the mechanical screwdriver or regular, doesn't matter. Okay, here we go, that's great. So, now we're gonna finish our disassembly. We're gonna start up here at the front. The flywheel cage screws, these four, one, two, three, four, are longer than every other screw in the blaster. So, they're easy to identify. Maybe they'll come out, maybe they won't. Sometimes they do, sometimes you have to just dump them after the fact. Oops, I dropped that one. Now we're gonna set those aside, not in the bucket with the rest because we'll never find them again. Um, or it's a bunch of extra work to find them again. That one didn't wanna come out, that's cool. The two silver screws for the wire cover. I'm gonna take those out. And keep them in our screw bucket. Wire cover. Short side is the front towards the flywheel cage. Long side back here, we're going to cut off, literally. Just take your nipper and go just like that. That's prepped. That's ready to go back in after we rewire. Or push your arm. We don't need any more. Okay? These little top hat screws are invaluable, guys. I always take them out and save them. Okay? There's two different sizes. you got the small ones, like it was here and here on this little uh, thermistor and you got two big ones one on the trigger and one on the pusher arm itself you have to absolutely save those so there's one and two definitely into the screw bucket okay again the whole pusher arm assembly because we're converting to full auto we don't need these anymore we're going to throw them away if you're not converting to full auto you need to keep those trigger Okay, um, for what we're going to do, we're going to do a little prep work on it right now. Okay, the nub where the spring uh, would go, or the area for a spring return, you can see you can set a spring right in there. Uh, that's got to be cut off. So, 
boom, we, we did that. And then this sounds odd, but the way I do them, you see I cut the whole front off of that trigger. Let's get the last trigger out of the way for a second. And then we're going to bore a small hole in it. And you can use a drill, or in this case, I've just got an X-Acto blade. Just twist it, twist it, twist it, back and forth, back and forth. And finally, you'll work your way through there. Rotate it a few times. You can see we made a nice clean hole. Hopefully you can see it on camera right at the end of the blade there. Okay, and that trigger is prepped everything but this little nub. Again, if you're looking at the trigger from that side, you're going to flip it over right here at the back and the bottom. I cut it off too, especially on these old ones. So just take your nipper and... Boom, there it goes. One of our eye protection we do this, guys, because a lot of little parts are going to be flying around. Um, so, but anyway, now we've prepped our trigger. Let's get the blaster body back over here. Okay, the cage is unscrewed. Take the top hat screw out of the footer mister. The silver screw out of the rev switch plate. We're going to keep that screw. We're going to take the switch plate off. Okay, looking at it from the top, we have to do a little trimming. Okay, on the back side of the plate, there's a nub right here at the end of my finger. We have to take it off. Like that. And then you can see there's a little wall in here. We're going to take that off too. Um, because we've got a great out of dart switch plate. Um, okay, so hopefully you can see it. Again, we've taken the nub off of this side, closest to the screw plate on the bottom. So again... We're holding it here. The nub that was here at the tip of my finger is now gone, and the little wall that was right here is also gone. That's ready to go back in. Okay, we're going to lift the rev switch and spring out. You see, the rev switch has got this little up and down thing. It actually serves as a mechanical lock. We don't need it anymore because we're going to put a electronic lock in it, so I just cut it off flush like that. Okay, keep the spring. That's ready. Okay, this and it's spring. That's a lock. You don't need it. We're throwing it away. You can start lifting the switches out. I like to save the switches from strifes um, because they're kind of wide. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can see it's kind of wide and squared up. Um, so these are nice for like doing voltmeters and things like that. I really like them um, a lot. Thermistor. Lift it up and you can see it's soldered on. So we're just going to Flip there. We're going to flip the wire off here. And then all we have to do is take this last plate off. So it's two silver screws. Again, I like to save the little silver screws. But you can throw them away if you want to. Everything there is garbage. You do not need to keep any of it. The spring, the switch, the, you know, the plate, the screws. You can throw every bit of it away. Turn it over. Dump all that junk out of there. Okay. Lift the screw out of the jam door hole. There we go. This has already been unscrewed now, so kind of give everything a wiggle. There we go. Now all of the electronics are out of the blast. Okay, we do not need any of it for what we are doing today. We got a bunch of little parts over here. We're now going to move to the garbage can. Okay. So we have some prep work to do now to the inside of this to make everything fit. So the first thing I like to do, the battery dividers, the little orange guys here. Those are very easy. From the inside of the blaster, if you just pinch them together, they just drop through the shell and come out. Piece of cake. Take them out. We don't need them. Okay. The battery springs. Okay. It's kind of hard for you guys to see on camera. Okay, they're kind of folded over during a kind of a weird spot. What I like to do is, I, and I've got several sets of these little flush cut pliers. Sometimes they will break even when they get old. And these, this set's kind of getting there. Okay, but I like to just trim and trim and trim and trim and trim at them. And give them a twist, and you can see, hopefully, that I've broken that off very flush. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Okay, those are flush with a small standard screwdriver. That's a flat tip. Okay, it's called a standard. And anything in the world to hit it with, guys, it doesn't have to be very heavy. Um, I'll use a, a 
wire skinner here, and hammer, anything like that. Set it on there, on the tips. Hopefully you can see. And give them a tap. You don't have to hit it real hard if you cut them off the lush. And you can see these are now sticking way up. Again, I probably shouldn't, but I like to just I use my nippers. Just reach in there and grab the metal and there's one. There's two. This side, there are no tabs sticking through the body, so if you grab the spring, if you can get it, and pull up on it like that, typically speaking, you can get it to spin, and then, so that's out of there now, so cool. Those are, again, garbage. We're not using them because we're converting to LiPo. So, battery tray. We have to be able to fit... In this case, this battery, this is the Out of Darts exclusive uh, uh, 950 milliamp, uh, 65C, uh, 130C burst, uh, 2S graphene lipo. And oopsie, um, it doesn't fit. So we have to take some material out. So the first thing we're doing is center post. So again, and hopefully I can get it on camera for you, there's the center post sticks up and there's two little flares on the side, so we're going to go in like this. Clip and lift on all those posts. Okay, and hopefully, I can get it close enough where you can see. See how I've pried them up here? And kind of just peeled away from the body. It's the easiest way I've found. Again, again with our X-Acto knife. Be very careful with X-Acto knives. You will cut yourself horribly. Okay. Work it from the top side, bottom side, whatever you're comfortable with. Just score along the plastic. Three, four times. Put a nice little line. There you go. And now work it with your thumb. That way. That way. And just keep going back and forth. And if you scored it properly, it will break off pretty flush. There we go. And you can see that's out of there. So we're already ahead of the game. Technically the battery will fit now. Um, but we're going to take this material at the rear out as well. So I'm going to turn off the camera, finish that up really quickly, and then we'll move on. Okay. You can see I've cleared out uh, all of the tabs and nubs and this, this, and that. And you can clean this up with sandpaper, your exacto knife, and really make it sharp, make it pretty. Okay. And for Paul's blasters, uh, we do another step here. Um, and we will need the cutting wheel for our Dremel. Um, this area right here where it says powered by Duracell, we're going to take this off. Okay, so all the way down here, flush with the bottom, right to the line here. And what that's going to do is going to make a little extra room to put the battery and wires and everything in here. So, again, I'm going to cut the camera off. Cut it real quickly, take it out, and then I'll show you how to finish it up. Okay, right, now I've made, started all my cuts with my Dremel. And you can see I didn't connect them because I don't want to tear the face of the blaster up. All we want is take this out. So we have to finish them with the X-Acto knife. So right here on the corner, we're going to get in here and just literally pressure. And there we go, that's fine. We have to continue this cut down to the bottom. So again, same thing. We work the blaster back, work the knife back and forth in the bottom. Same thing here at the back corner. Okay, and then down here. All the way down. And then the last stretch will be from here to there. Okay, and I think we pretty well got that. So if we take it and push it from the back side. You can see it's pretty much ready to come out of there. We might have one little odd deal holding us here. All right, there we go. So now this is really rough. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, most of it is just slag where we heated it up by cutting it. So you can literally just take your thumb and start peeling off this rough stuff. Now it's actually not too bad. You can take your X-Acto knife and kind of scrape it or like I'm doing here. From the inside and uh again pretty it up to your 
to your desired level here. And uh, I, I try to take a little time with that. So. And one of the techniques that I found useful is to take the X-Acto knife, okay, and take this and put it on there flat and just scrape at it a little bit. Blow it out and you can see that looks quite good. So if we take our battery door, uh, that was prepped already. You can see that still drops in there nicely. We didn't tear the body of the blast drop around it, but now we've got this great huge hole uh, to drop our battery and wires in. Lots of room for everything, so cool. So that's prepping the battery tray. We're gonna flip the blaster over and start prepping the inside for its internals. Okay, so we've got this great out of darts 3D printed switch plate now, but there has to be a little prep work. So right around here, you see there's a nub sticking up here and another one sticking up here. We want to save those. Okay, so we're going to take our cutter and cut straight down in front of both of them um, uh, without taking them out. Okay, and we're going to literally take this material down uh, so that it sets flush because if not it the lever on the micro switch will hang up and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in a minute so just get in here and carve this down a little bit don't be shy don't be scared of it just take your time don't go too fast So you can see we've cut this little box down quite a bit. So we're going to drop the switch plate in there. And, and it's a it's kind of a tight fit. It's a friction fit. You can see that we don't have too much material sticking up past it. Just a little bit. Don't think it's going to interfere with us. So we've got our micro switch. This is a 21 amp micro switch. Very clicky. Very cool. Um, it's got a nub drop sticking up on there. We're just going to put it on and uh, drop that in place. Hey, this little blue part that's sticking up uh, is interfering just a hair, so we have to trim it just a hair more. We don't want anything interfering with the way the switch sets. So we're just going to take that corner down a little bit more. Oh, that should do. Okay, we're going to drop our switch plate in. Really push it down in there and make sure that it fits flush. That looks good. Drop our switch. All right, that's beautiful. Now our rev switch with the spring that we already prepped, we cut that top edge off. We're going to put it back in. There we go. All right, that's sitting nice. Our little switch cover, we're going to put that back on now. And the reason we saved those two posts, because it helps us line them up. Um, there's one, there's two. And we're going to screw it back down. Now we're going to come behind shortly hereafter and hot glue the switch in place. Just to make sure that it doesn't move. But Okay, and that's how you do the out of dark switch plate. And then I take my hot glue gun, which is already heated up here. Let's put a little dab of glue right around there. And then right down here in the bottom, you don't have to. 
but I like to put a little bit of hot glue in there just to help hold that nice and stable. So there's the switch. Okay, we have some more prep work yet to do in here for the rest of the internals. We got to cut a wall down here. I'm going to show you how I do the switch for full auto because we're going to put a big 15 amp switch in there. And then uh, up here at the front, what we're going to do for our flywheel cage is uh, pretty easy stuff. So I'm going to shut the camera down. Give me just a couple of minutes, let this hot glue set up, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so right in here above the rep trigger, there's a little wall. Okay, so I like to come into the body of the blaster and just open it up um, because we're going to be running a wire through here. So hopefully you can see I just cut a nice V shape out of it. Um, Oh, there we go. Okay, for our other micro switch, this is the switch we're going to be using. Okay, and we're actually going to put it right here. So the first thing that we have to do is get rid of the lever. So, um, it's really easy to do, guys, if you've got the Dremel one cutting wheel. Okay, take it, hold the blade kind of flat like that, and just score it. You don't have to cut it off. I just scored it with a Dremel and then fold it a couple times and it breaks right off. That's what we want. Okay. So we have to make room for it. So right here where the old spring mount uh, could go. It necessarily doesn't, but it could. Come here out of there. All right. We got to cut that down. So we're going to get in here as deep as we can with our cutters and really kind of go to work on this section right here. And you can see we just took a huge chunk of it out. And we're not done. We're not even close to done. Um, the more of it you can take down at that back side, the easier you'll have with wiring. Okay, so right here close to the bosses. Okay. Uh, let me get my silver marker. Maybe you'll see. Okay, this wall and this wall. We're going to put two little cuts in it. We're not going all the way to the bottom. We're just going to cut them down in height. Okay, so we're just going to go straight vertically with the cutters. Try to eye shot them up even if you can. Again, we're still cleaning up the old wall. And then come in here. And remove a good piece of that wall. Okay, and anyway, now we have to go back the other way and cut it off level. Okay, and same thing with the upper one, and this piece here is kind of intermittent where my tip nippers are at right now. You can see me going to go into town on that. And you'll get the idea as soon as I go to put the switch in it, guys. What we're doing here. Okay, so now we've got most of it. There's two little nubs in here that wires ran through right in here. I don't know if you can see them or not. Cut them out. You don't need them. They're just in the way. And uh, all in all, this is starting to look pretty good. But basically, all we're doing is cutting these down into a platform for our switch to set on. So, once you've done the rough work with the nippers, I like to come back with the X-Acto blade and just kind of Clean it up. You don't, you don't have to cut it, cut it. Just uh, clean up all the rough edges and kind of level it off if it's not. There we go. That looks pretty good. There's one little kind of hill down in this section down here. I'm just going to take that down. A couple little quick passes. That looks pretty good. And now we're going to set our switch in there. And... Looks to me like we still got to come down on this little middle section here just a bit. Because we want that switch to set in there reasonably, reasonably. Flat. There we go. So now you can see the switch, how that's going to set in there. So we're going to get our epoxy putty and uh, make a mount for this one because I don't have any kind of a plate or anything like that that will go in there. Uh, so that's set up for the switch. The last bit of prep work that we need to do to the shell is up here in the motor cage area. Okay, now the motor cages that we're using 
I've already set up, okay, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't go through this with you, but honestly, if you cannot set up a motor cage, uh, at this point, you should not be attempting this mod. This is a worker, 43.5 millimeter cage, it's got uh, containment crew inferno wheels, fang revamp motors, it's got the Kelly Industries uh, spanner plate here, which is really nice, Say, you know, and nice and clean, it's beautiful, it looks great. I've also got the rubber isolators in there on top of the motors. Hey, but because we got this plate in here, there's little tabs in here four of them uh, that we need to take out now it's not that difficult again if you just get in here with a nipper and take the little short part of the tee off flip down and then lift up and you can see it pretty well just pops off there same thing with this one and again this doesn't have to be pretty we're just making space and then same thing exacto knife score along it one Two, yeah, we'll call it three times. Fold it over with your thumb, and there it goes. And it breaks off nice and flush. And what we're doing is we're making room for this uh, switch plate and our motor to sit down in here without hitting on anything. Um, so, again, same thing. Let me take the rest of them out. One, two, three, and four, whatever. There we go. The more you score it, the easier it breaks out. These upper ones, same thing. Uh, you, can, you can see where we're going here, guys. And yes, you cannot do this job without an exacto knife. I don't care what anybody tells you. There's that one. One. Two. Three. And yeah, we'll call it four. And I like to get in here with this one and just kind of lever at it. There we go. So there you can see, we broke all the tabs out of there. That's lots of room for our motors, everything like that. So time to make our epoxy putty mount. We're going to put the switch in, and then when I come back, I'll go ahead and show you how I wire them. Okay, so our epoxy putty set up. I've driven these two screws into the epoxy putty to hold the switch down. It's nice and firm. And you remember the hole that we drilled in the front of the trigger up here where my finger's at. I also drilled one in the front of the body right here inside the magwell. So I've got this little extension spring uh, that we're going to use to assist the trigger return. Now this came out of a kind of a universal set that I bought on Amazon. Um, it's like 20 bucks for this. There's 200 springs in there. You'll never use them all, but for what we do, uh, there's a lot of great stuff in here. So I'm going to feed the spring through the hole in the trigger that I bored in it. Like that. And then this one, ow. We're gonna open up a little bit. You can use your nippers, don't cut it, just open it. Kinda grab it and open it up. And put it down through that wall. The hole that we made in that. Let's see if I can get that in there. It's not always easy to do while we're filming here. There we go, that's in there. And once it is in there, you can take your little plier or whatever you got and kind of pull the spring taut. make sure that it doesn't come out then that's going to serve great and now we're going to take one of our big big top hat screws and put it right back through the trigger and screw it down okay, and okay now this makes for a very short trigger pull But it's very solid, very clicky, and it works super good. So now we're going to start our wiring. So we're going to take this part of the blaster and set it aside. We're going to get some wire here. I'm making a mess. 
All right, there we go. Uh, this is silicon insulated wire. It's 18 gauge. It's what I use. Um, I've got two colors here. I've got black and I've got green. So for the sake of this, we'll use black as our negative, green as our positive. It does not matter what color you use, guys, so long as you know what wire is what. So. We're going to start with our cage. Got our little handy hands here. We're probably going to need that. Soldering iron's already warm. When you solder, make sure you have a little sponge thing that goes with it. Moisten that. This is nice and damp. Uh, you're going to need that. Got our solder right here. If it's this cheap solder I got at Walmart, it's not the stuff I normally like to use, but it works just fine. It's just a little more difficult to work with. Okay, so in this case, I've got my little wire skinner here. We're just going to skin a little bit off this black wire. Maybe connect it to the spool. You can see I haven't cut it. Okay, we're going to twist it a bit. So it doesn't splay out. Then we're going to hold it with a handy hand and put it on the tab on our switchblade that says minus. Okay, so now I've got my soldering iron. It's already heated up. Okay, I'm going to put a little blob of solder on the iron. Hold the solder on until it melts. And hopefully you can see that, that there's a little blob on there, okay? Now I'm going to touch it to the wire, push the wire into place, and feed some solder on. And we're just going to hold the heat onto it until it fluxes and melts into the board. I'm going to blow on that. Okay, and this is, guys, the biggest mistake that I see with nerve blasters when they come in to be repaired is poor soldering. You have to solder to a flux. Okay, now I'm not talking about using the flux paste that you you'll paint on with a brush or whatever. You don't need that crap. Don't use it. You have to solder until the solder becomes molten. And you can see how strong that wire is on there. It's not coming off. So we're going to do the same thing with the other side, which is going to be our positive wire. In this case, it's going to be green. Uh, you could use red, it doesn't matter. You can use pink, orange, purple. So long as you know what the positive lead is. And again, we're going to use our handy hand and just kind of set it in place. That's close enough. Same deal. We're going to put a little blob on the soldering iron. Just hold it there until it melts onto the end of the iron. And the reason we do that is because nothing melts solder better than molten solder. And we're going to push the wire down, feed solder in, and just hold it here until it melts into the plate. There we go. Get a blow. Okay, let go with a handy hand. Double check it again, nice and tight. And uh, you know, please note, both wires are still connected to the spool. Um, because in order to save wire, I cut them to length as we go. So now, we've got the front end part, got the blaster over here, the cage is wired and ready to go. Okay, I've got the little tiny barrel that came out of the stock body. Now you don't have to do this, but it kind of helps line everything up stick it in there drop all this in place okay so in the end this has got a lanyard adapter up here by my thumb or lanyard uh, reducer so take your time tuck your wires into their channels make sure everything drops in place that looks great you let your wires run on out the back side of the blasters I've got them here and we're gonna screw the cage down so Let's go ahead and tend to that, and I'll be right back with you. 
Okay, so what I've got here is an XSW full auto cat. And I also have an MTB Honey Badger motor because Paul likes uh, his fire rate to be really high on these. So now I've thrown away these come with like a, uh, a battery tray and all kinds of stuff. And there's parts in here that we're not going to use, like the motor that came with it. We're going to get rid of that. We don't need it. Uh, the little 5 amp micro switch, again, don't need it. This is actually a trigger return spring. Again, in this case, we don't need it. But hold on to this. These things are valuable. So hold on to those. So I just put those over here in the bin and save them for later. Okay, we've got a little small screw that comes with it. Our gearbox. Uh, it comes with two gears to put on our primary motor, the pusher arm, and the mount. So let's start with the gearbox. If you're looking at the gearbox with the shaft sticking up, I'll take our Honey Badger motor. Okay, now first thing we're going to do is put our gear on here. It's a pinion gear. It just slides on. And you want to slide it on with a little bit of the shaft sticking out of the top. And hopefully you can see it there. Uh, this is kind of eye shot. And then the red dot on the motor, again, if you're holding the gearbox with the shaft up, you're going to put the red dot this side over here. So you're going to slide that motor in there and just kind of work it in place. And our pinion gear, you can see it's got a little protrusion sticking up on one side. That goes down. Okay, and that's so you can clear this nub on the gearbox here. So we're going to go ahead and line that up and just push it on. There we go. Give it a turn. Okay, you can hear the motor going, so we must have got it lined up pretty good. So at this point, I like to take my screwdriver. It's a little one. And these two little Phillips screws right here, I like to make sure that they're tight, because a lot of times they're not that tight. So I've snugged those. Here's the rubber motor holder. It will have to be stretched to go over your honey badger, but there's two little hooks, so you hook it on one side. Just got to hold it with your thumb and stretch it out a bit. Hey, okay, wrap it over the motor and then hook it up on this other hook on the back side. So that will hold your motor into the gearbox. And we are rocking here. So now we've got our mounting plate. Okay. The front tab on the motor goes in this hole into my finger on this plate. Okay, with the black protrusion on the plate here on top. Okay, now they used to come with a screw and nut. Okay. These days, the plates are made with such a tension that you can just take this little screw and drive it into the plastic of the mounting plate, and it holds just fine. So take your screwdriver, run that in. Okay, that's nice and tight. You can see all that's good. So now our full auto kit is prepped. We need our uh, spacer, our arm, our gearbox and uh, pinion gear with our retainer plate. And now we need the body of the blaster back with all that wire still connected to the spools. So we've got our flywheel cage bolted down. We're in green is positive. So in the original wire track, I'm gonna push the wires in there. I like to use my little standard screwdriver and just kind of push them down in the hole. Same thing with the black lead. Just kind of route them through there and put the plate back in. Okay, remember, we cut the long end off, so the long end used to go to the rear of the blaster, closer to the trigger. Now it's just cut off of there. So we're just going to set that back down in place, take the silver screws uh, that were in it, and screw it back down. So there's that one. And again, I guess you don't have to do this. But it makes for a cleaner look inside the blaster. As you can see there, that looks really good. Okay, so our black wire set on the side. Your green wire, your positive wire. So in this case, again, green. But whatever wire is your positive wire. And route it around the top. Make sure you can see it here. Around here, around here, kind of through this gap a little bit. And we're just roughing out the length. Okay, so you can see where I've bent it to contact this motor tab. We'll get into that in a minute. So leave a little slack right there on the bottom motor tab there and then route it around some more so that it comes in contact 
see if you can see it better here if I switch hands with this motor tab all the way on the bottom right there so okay and leave yourself a hair of extra not too much we're gonna just leave about like that and cut that green wire off that's our positive lead okay so the reason that we routed it the way we did is I like to use just one wire so we run to the positive on the flywheel cage here okay we're gonna come around here okay there are three tabs on the switches we use this one on the back okay my camera battery conked out on me here this last section but we didn't get very far okay so we put our motor wire cover back in place here okay we routed the wires underneath there our green wire which is our positive okay we stuck around here, routed around here, kind of brought it in behind this switch. Like I said, lots of extra here. Little room there, little room there, so we can make it down here to the bottom. Okay, and then we, we went on ahead and cut it off. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and solder this up. Now, these micro switches have three pins on them, okay? Okay, if you're looking at the switch on the angle that I'm looking at it with the button over here, or the lever, and on the very back side of the switch, which, let me see here, if I get another one, maybe you can see it better. So I've got one in my hand, perhaps you can see this one better. Okay, this tab back here, okay, is known as the common tab. This tab is the normally open, this tab is normally closed. Okay, meaning that when the lever's out, like it is right now, okay, that this tab and the common tab are connected together, okay? And when you push this in, okay, that the this tab and the common are now connected together and it disconnects from this front one. Okay, and the reason that's important is because we're gonna put motor braking on the pusher for this blaster. So, again, we're routing our wire through here. We'll route it in there. Around behind the switch, we're gonna leave a little bit of extra. Okay, cool. So right in here, and the great thing about silicon insulated wire is that typically speaking, you can take it and just peel it. If you pinch it, and you can open it up just like I did right there. So we're gonna take our handy hand and uh, hold it still because we're gonna tin it up. There we go. That's fine for that. Okay, so we're going to take our solder and iron, and again, we're just going to put some solder on the end, just melt it on there. Sorry, my iron went to sleep. There we go. So I got a little bit of solder on that. We're going to take it and hold it to the back side of the wire until it gets good and hot. Feed it some more solder. And let's work it back and forth here. Okay, so we got a nice blob of solder on the wire. Okay, on the motor switch, so in this case, we're going to go to the normally open tab. That's this one. Right at the end of my X-Acto knife. This tab. We're going to take the same thing. Little blob on the soldering iron. Now we're going to take see if I can get myself in an angle here. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it. Okay. I'm going to hold it to the tab. Feed it some solder. And hold it there until it fluxes. Okay. It's got to like literally like flatten out all by itself. And like mag, almost it like magic. Let's see if you can get a shot of it here. Attach. See how smooth that is on that motor tab. That's what you want. Now our wire that we tinned up. We're gonna attach the two points. So we got a little blob of solder here on the wire, and we're gonna connect it to the little blob of solder that we just put on this motor tab. So again, I know my arms are kind of in the way. It's kind of hard to film and do this at the same time. So bear with me. And again, a little dab, tiny dab on the soldering iron because nothing melts solder better than molten solder. So 
we're gonna put our wire in position. You can hold it by hand, you can hold it with handy hands, whatever you gotta do. Have your buddy do it though it gets really hot, be careful. Okay. Heat the solder up on the wire until it melts. Keep heating it, keep heating it, keep heating it until it melts into the switch tab. Okay, and that's what happens if you don't hold it long enough. Well, now we got to do it again. Blow. Take your sponge and cool that, cool that switch plate tab off because they get really hot and you can actually melt the plastic and ruin your switches. Okay, see how strong that is? That's in there really good. Take it, kind of route it around the bottom of the blaster, and connect it to the common. Again, this one on the rear, right here doesn't really matter you can connect it to the common or the normally open but since we're a little short here we're just gonna go right to the common so what I like to do is take my tab on the common and just bend it open a little bit and yeah, the wires are maybe a hair too long cut my wire off to the length I need skin a little piece of the back and give it a twist Stick it through the hole in the switch, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around so I can solder it easier. And then a lot of times what I will do, once the wire's in there, I will take it and kind of bend it down so it doesn't have any chance of connecting to the body. And we're just gonna solder that up again. Piece of cake here, guys. We're gonna put a little solder on the iron. Here we go, we got a little bit. I'm gonna reach in there, very careful not to touch anything but the metal switch plate. Okay, so we've got that soldered in now, and I kind of bent the little tab back into the side of the blaster here. And uh, I know you guys have been dying to know, all right, the black lead, we still got it connected to our spool here. Um, we haven't cut it off yet because uh, it's going to connect to our pusher motor, then down to the normally closed on this switch, and we're going to run it out to the battery tray. Uh, so there's quite a bit of stuff going on here. Now, uh, I've got my pusher mechanism set up. And again, if you set it up the way I did, right, gear on top with the red dot to the right of your screen, hopefully you can see it there, okay, that side, the right side, even though it's the red dot, will be the negative wire, okay, and I mark mine. See, there's a plus over here. So I soldered myself a piece of green wire on here, since it's my positive, to the side to get it set up. So what we're going to do is just kind of set this thing in here the way it's supposed to go, like that. There we go. And I see our black wire. We're gonna kind of tuck down in the hole. And we need to open it up. So right here, we're gonna fold it up. I'm gonna take and peel it open again. It never works by hand when I want it to. There we go. And so we've Peel the black wire up and expose a nice area. We're going to take our X-Acto knife and kind of work down between the little threads of the wire. I don't, hopefully you can see. Okay, and then open it up nice and big and make a hole in it. And hopefully you can see it with my hand there. Now we're going to take this out. I'm going to put that over the motor tab. Like this and then twist it on. So that that's good and snug. Okay, and then now we're going to solder it in place. So we're going to need to have our handy hand to kind of hold everything still. That'll be fine. Um, note to remember, we um, want to solder it in such a position. And I'm sure I'll manage to yank it off. Here. Um, There we go. That the extra wire is going to route out goes to the inside. That way. 
And I know it looks weird, sounds weird. Give me a second here, it'll make more sense. Let me go ahead and solder it on. Again, little blob that I put on the soldering iron. Hold it in the motor tab. Until it just kind of, the solder will envelop everything all by itself when you solder to a flux. And if you guys need help with that, maybe I'll do a soldering video. Okay, so, that will suffice. Okay, we can let that go now. And you can see our wires on. And where I said, connected to the spool, kind of routes through the middle of the wire, motor. That's because it routes underneath the plate here, like this. <laughs> so, just like that. And that's see, all that's nice and neat and out of the way. So at this point in time, what I do is I get one of those little smaller top hat screws uh, that we took out of it. Um, and screw the motor plate down. And that's the great thing about the XSW kit. It's the only one. The XSW kit comes with that mounting plate with a screw hole lined up. All you have to do is screw it into the body. So it's super cool. Um, so all of that's nice. Here's the green lead from the pusher. So that is going to go to the common tab. Okay, on our trigger switch right there. So... Again, a little routing here, just kind of play around with it and get it routed and out of the way. Nip off what you don't need. Skin a piece back, tin it up, solder it on. So, you see I've skinned it. I've tinned it, and now I have to move everything around a little bit. Ow. Burn myself. Oops. Yeah, don't grab your wire that you just soldered, because you'll burn yourself pretty badly. Uh, this is going to be a better angle for me to work with. Same thing that we do with the other tab. Little blob on the iron. Very carefully, we're going to get in here and just put some solder on that motor, uh, on that switch tab. Just melt it in there. Hold the wire that we've tinned up to the tab, heat both heat it up until the solders melt together. Let this take its time, guys. There it goes. Give it a blow. Take your sponge. Cool that down. And hopefully you can see how I've done that. And that's super strong. And then we can just kind of tuck it in here behind the switch. Just like that. And we're moving right along. And actually, guys, we're almost done. So we've got our negative wire still routed out. Okay, so at this point in time, right up here in the top where my finger's at, we've got to put another separation in it. So, peel it open. And I'm, if you have fingernails, it peels real easy. If you don't, it's kind of a bigger pain in the butt. Same thing as we did before. We're going to open a little hole in it. Okay, and then, eh. So, there's the hole. It's got to come around here to the common, I'm sorry, to come around to the normally closed. That would be the front tab here on the trigger switch. So, I get something a little bigger here. Or my screw, you see the tip of my screwdriver right here. That's where this negative wire's got to come. So, leave yourself a little bit of a, an amount here. A lot of room to route down there. And cut it off. Take your wire. Pull, I don't know, three or four inches off. Like this, this is plenty. Skin the ends of it. I'm giving you gold here. This is a really, really efficient way to do this. Okay, twist the ends of that up so they're nice and smooth and clean and easy here. The hole that we just made in that, right, and the wire that we just cut, stick this wire in that hole, right, the end that we twist it up. And then 
twist that hole shut. So you see we've got this kind of T shape going on there. Hey, this is going to be a super, super good connection. Hey, same thing, if you solder to a flux, we can envelop the whole area with solder and it will be strong as a freaking brick. Okay, so a little blob on the iron. Maybe a little more. Hold it to the back side. Feed some solder and just hold the heat on it. And if you did all that right, and we're going to cool it with a sponge because it's going to be super hot. Okay. Now you've got a connection that, again, is super strong. And you can see me pulling on that. It's very, very strong. So the little end that's sticking out now, we're just going to trim that off. And we'll put a little piece of heat shrink on it uh, to clean it up and make it nice. So, let me do that. So take your heat shrink and put it over both ends. Here's one, here's two. Slide it all the way down, go right over top of the joint that you just made. Just push the heat shrink on there. Sometimes you have to rest a little bit. Whoops, went a little too far there. There you go, that's on there. Now, you can melt your heat shrink any way you like. I have a cigarette lighter here. Be very careful not to burn the body of the blaster. Um, just hold this, hold some heat to it for just a second. You don't have to hold it long, guys. The heat shrink melts down, and that's a really nice, nice deal here. So, one of these is going to go straight out to the battery connector, and the other one is going to come down here to our tab. So, in this case... I'm going to go ahead and stick the one through the hole there into the battery tray. And we got it pulled through the hole there. The other one we're going to go ahead and route down here and just solder into our switch. So again, I'll fold that over a little bit. It's fine for the wire to stick up a hair because we're going to do a little wire management with some hot glue here directly. Same thing, guys. Right to the switch tab, right at the base where the wire comes through. Just feed it some solder, feed it some solder, give it a second to flux. There it goes. And then cool it with a sponge. And you can hear that sizzle, I hope. Okay, and that again is brick solid. And our trigger's still nice and clicky. Um, so those wires are in. We got plenty of extra to kind of route out of the way here. Okay, and we have one more wire to put in, and that's the main power wire that's going to run the battery. So in this case, it's going to come to the normally open. That's this one, right at the end of the wire. And it's got to route up here, around all this stuff, blah, 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 and then leave a couple more inches to go inside the battery tray. Don't worry, we'll cut it down later. So... Again, trim the end off, give it a twist, stick it right through the hole in the switch. Fold it down with a screwdriver, solder it in place. And a little blob on the soldering iron. sponge so that it doesn't melt our plastic on the switch and ruin it. You should still have a nice clicky sound from your switch. Yes, very good. Okay, wire kind of routed around back through here. 
doesn't have to go in the little crack. It can kind of go over. And again, we're going to stick it through the hole that we made into the battery tray. There we go. Okay, so a little wire management. The first thing that we're going to do is start right here where my fingers at right in here inside the handle and just kind of glue those down in place all right so put some hot glue in there give it a minute to set up uh, the rest of them can wait for a second so, as soon as the hot glue sets up, I'm going to go ahead and solder the XT60 on, 60 on, and uh, we'll, give it a, we'll give it a test fire. Okay, so we've cut our wires down to about the same length of the battery tree. We've skinned them. I use what they call an AMAS. It's A-M-A-S. Uh, XT60 connector. It comes with these great uh, clip ends that cover it up, uh, so we don't have to do a bunch of heat shrink. So, first thing we're going to do now that we've got the wires ready is we're going to put one wire through each of the holes in the clip and just slide it down okay pro tip this is the end uh, that we need to plug our battery into okay take the other end of a bare connector and plug them together like that okay and the reason that we do this is because it acts like a heat sink um, because a lot of times you'll get these ends so hot that will actually melt the plastic and ruin your battery connector. So, go ahead and plug a spare junk end into it. Make sure that you have your wires going to the proper locations. Uh, they are marked on the connector, positive and negative, or plus and minus, however you want to call it. Again, cool it with a sponge because it's going to be freaking hot. <laughs> Give it a test. Nice and strong. Flip it over. Put your negative in. I don't know until it's just kind of setting in there. There we go. That's good. Again, little blob on the soldering iron. To get us started, and we're gonna hold the uh, whoops, let's not slide the blaster out of position here. Hold that down and start feeding solder in there. Hold it in place until it fluxes. Smooth, whoops, didn't mean to hit the camera, guys. Sorry, cool it with a sponge. Cool our iron off. Okay, again, give it a test. Each wire, you can see those are nice clean solders. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and slide our little clip up, and that's what the great thing about these battery uh, clips. I really like these ones. Um, there we go. Slide that up till it till it clips in place, and you can see that is such a clean battery connector. Okay, so. All we have left to do, guys, uh, before giving this thing a test, is to put in the auto kit. So now we're ready to do a little wire management in this last section here. So hopefully it shows. You can see I've got my little pink glue on here. I'm going to go to town and just put some hot glue in there and hold those wires still. All right. So there's that. As soon as that cools down, we'll put the rest of the pusher kit in and we'll give this thing a test fire. All right, so we've done our wire management. Uh, we're gonna need some lubricant. And I like a piece of uh, scrap wire uh, that I cut off of something to apply lubricant. We're gonna put it on the pinion gear, the teeth of the pusher arm itself, inside this section of the pusher arm where it slides, and just kind of lubricate everything up really, really good. Um, 
You can use silicone insulated lubricant. Um, you can use Vaseline. Uh, this is basically just Vaseline that came with a worker kit here. So I'm just gonna take my wire and kind of smear it on here. And uh, I like to be very generous with the lubricant. There's no need not to. You can also just take your magic uh, lubricant spreader here, your finger, and smear it on where you want it to be and then smooth it out here. My top section of that, we'll put some on the gear here. And this is actually a very important step, guys. Uh, I've actually worked on blasters that had a mediocre fire rate. And then when you took and lubricated everything properly, uh, they ran super fast. So, um, so, we need our return spring that we originally took out. We're going to hook it through into this. We're going to drop this in place. Slide that back. Okay. Make sure all this is moving nice. Yep, that looks good. And we've got our little spacer. It goes right there. Just like that. We need our other big top hat screw. Sorry, I was having difficulty finding it for a second. Okay, I do not use an electric screwdriver for this, guys. Regular screwdriver. Screw it down. Okay, once it's flush, once it's flat, you'll find that the pusher will barely move. Okay, so once you've got it reasonably snug, start back it out. Till the spring allows it to pull back freely. Okay, at this point in time, guys, this blaster is all done. So we've got our little lipo. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if everything works. Okay, well, plus, we plugged our battery up and it didn't catch on fire. So we're going to go ahead and rev it and make sure that the flywheels are rotating the right direction. So let's grab a dart just to make sure. So that sounds great. All right, here we go. Flywheels work right, so now we're gonna go ahead and work the pusher motor a little bit. I'll try a single pulse, and it can be got breaking, so it'll be able to. You'll be able to single fire it a little easier here, and it should have a very, very fast rate of uh, auto fire, 10, 11 darts a second. So watch this thing go. Here we go. Oh, yeah, okay, it's ready to put back together. We're gonna unplug our battery. Okay, we've got our lower lanyard mount. We're gonna put that back in there. There we go, that's fine. We've got our little in strike nub. Put that back in, and now the shell is ready to go back together. All right, literally, guys, this is it. So, we've done everything, all the prep work on this side of the shell already, so we should just be able to kind of stick it back together. And you know you built a blaster right when it closes up properly uh, without fighting you too badly. Now, we've got all kinds of new wiring going on in here. But if we've routed it right, managed it right, done everything okay, you can see that this closed up just fine. So, again, to put back together, get our screws out of here. Okay, we had two shorter ones. They go in the top here on the rail. All the rest of them do not matter. So, But those two short ones go in the very tippy top. And if you're just looking at them laid out, and that's the reason I separate them, uh, because they're just barely shorter, guys. Um, so now if you use an electric to put these back together, you have to be very careful. Um, do not be heavy-handed with your electric screwdriver. I recommend not using one um, unless you've been doing it for a long time um, because you can actually over-tighten the screws and strip out the plastic and then the screws won't be tight anymore. Whoops. Fumble. But typically what I like to do at this point in time is just set all the screws back into their respective holes here and then 
go behind with my screwdriver and tighten them all down. So there they are. Now, obviously, we left the access door off. We got the worker front end. Paul's going to put like a big rail or something across here. He requested that we leave them off. Now, we've done a little wire management here and kind of glued everything up in there. And let me show you exactly why we cleared all this space and why we cut this out. So, we're going to plug our battery up. And this extra space in there uh, literally allows us to tuck the XT60 which is a big connector for a strife up in the hole there and in our battery door which again we cut all the tabs off of and cut it nice and flat we'll go over and close up pretty nicely um, on a strife I'll try to see if I can get it on camera for you let me screw it down here okay on a strife it does bow ever so slightly I don't know how well you can see that it's just a tiny tiny bit if you use that battery um, but almost no one would ever notice um, and this blaster is This blaster's done so guys, I uh, hope you got a little something out of that uh, I realized it was a long video, but uh, the build guides normally are uh, if you have any more questions Definitely definitely feel free to post them and I'll answer answer them as I get them Alright guys, you can see I had a big piece of cardboard here. I tried to get something that wasn't going to reflect too much. And I've drawn out all my components. So we've got our flywheel cage, our pusher, the battery connector, our trigger switch, and our ref switch. Now you can see here I've labeled the tabs on these switches. So the one that comes out of the back of the switch and makes this L shape, that's the common tab. Okay, this one closest to it that sticks at the bottom, so kind of the middle one, that's your normally open. Okay, this one far forward, closest to the side, with the lever, that's the normally closed. So what that means is that this tab and the common tab, okay, are connected together. Full time while the switch is open. Okay, when you push the lever back and close the switch, you hear a little click. This opens and it connects here, normally open to common. Okay, and that's very, very important because we're going to wire motor braking onto the pusher in this blaster, and so you really need to know which tab is which. Uh, so, let's start with the negative wire. Okay, as you saw in the video, uh, I don't do a lot of extra cutting and run, you know, five or eight wires when I can get away with running one. So, our negative wire, which we're going to use this silver, hopefully it shows up, it's going to come from the cage to our pusher motor, we're not going to cut it, we're going to keep it together. Okay, and we'll dip underneath the pusher motor, come up here to our battery connector. Okay, so all this is one wire. Okay, then we put a little splice in it, you guys saw me do it in the video, okay, and th this splice and this extra piece of wire, that's going to be for our motor braking. So we're going to run that splice down here to the normally closed okay on the trigger switch that's it that is the total amount of negative wire um, and that's exactly how you run it uh, to have motor braking on an auto strife if you don't want motor braking you don't need to add this splice and this piece of wire in so it's just from cage to the negative side of your pusher motor to the battery connector very very simple very easy for the positive we're going to try this red hopefully it'll show on camera for you and we have to do a couple of positive wires. But let's start with the one that I know everybody's going to ask me about. From the cage. Hey, we came up here. I looked around. 
I connected right here to the normally open on the trigger switch, but I didn't cut the wire. Again, I soldered it up and came down here to the normally open on that. So again, this is all one big old piece. And if you saw it in the handle, right where the switches set the way they are, this flows much smoother to my drawing here. But um, uh, now you can cut it and solder both ends to the switch, but like I said, I just like to literally peel it back and solder it on this and just continue the wire on. Okay, so we have two more total wires. Okay, so our trigger switch, let's take a look at that. We have the common tab left. The common tab on the trigger switch is going to go to the positive side of your pusher motor. Just like that. Okay, and the last one is going to be from the common tab on our ref switch to our battery connector. Okay, and so hopefully, uh, with any luck, I'll be able to illustrate. I know I got a little scrambly here. Okay, so power is going to come in from our battery, right, down the line to the common tab on the switch. Okay. Now, it can't go anywhere until we close the switch, right, and connect it to the normally open. Then it bridges this gap. Right in here. When we close the switch, this makes a connection, right? So it runs around up here to our trigger switch, right, where we kind of jumped onto it, and then swings out to our flywheel cage. So when we pull this switch here, it revs our flywheels and sends power to our trigger switch. Now, the reason we use this normally open, right, what did we say? The normally closed and the common are connected when the switch is open. So, if you look at the normally closed here, we have it connected to a negative wire. If you hook a positive wire up to the common, you're creating a dead short. You'll actually melt your battery or set your blaster on fire. So, it's very, very important if you're going to do motor braking, okay, that your negative lead for your motor brake goes on the normally closed and that your power in goes to the normally open. So that when you close the switch, it disconnects from this and makes this loop here. All right, so when we close it, right, power is going to run up to our pusher. When we release it, this negative current is going to flow back up to the pusher and just stop it dead really, really fast. Um, so hopefully, guys, uh, that illustrates a little better than maybe what you could see on the desk of what we did here. But it's really, really very simple. Like I said, our negative is going to come from the cage to the pusher motor, to the battery connector in one wire, put the splice in for our motor braking to the normally closed on the trigger switch. Our positive is gonna come from the flywheel cage around to the normally open on the trigger switch down to the normally open on the rev trigger switch. Okay, our pusher motor, okay, positive lead is gonna come around to the common on this trigger switch and lastly, the battery connector is going to connect to the common on the rev switch. It's actually pretty simple to wire, um, and I've got in the habit of doing it this way because of wire management. It's easier to do when you're not running additional wires for this and for that and for this and for that. Um, so, for example, instead of running two wires off of here uh, to jump over to power this and things like that, it's all just one kind of continuous wire that I've been doing this uh, with, and it works really, really well. It's rock solid. It's a great way to do it. So, guys, if you have any questions, uh, you know, please feel free to put them in the comments, send me an email, but I think this pretty well illustrates it. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a real, real long one, but I wanted to get this section in for you. Uh, so please, by all means, guys, throw me a like, uh, some comments, uh, subscribe, smash that notifications button. This is Chris for Project Nerf saying, until next time, have a blast.